Hal Rogers once said that being grown up means we can have our own way at our own expense. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Christian Questions Talk Radio with a purpose with Jonathan and Rick. The objective of our program is to discuss with you, our listeners, thought-provoking and meaningful topics based on the Bible. It's a call-in format. We're caller-friendly, and we'd love to hear from you. And for those of you who may be listening for the first time, our perspective is this. We believe that there is one God, and through him there is one truth which is found in the Bible. Our purpose is to stir your thinking up along with ours as we continually search for clarity and understanding this one truth. While we are not here to teach, we are here to seriously provoke your thinking according to Hebrews 10.24, which is the theme for our program. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. This provoking is encouraged by Isaiah in chapter 1, verse 18. Come now and let us reason together. And we look to frame our comments in the context of 1 Thessalonians 5, 19 and 21. Quench not the spirit, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. The only end result we seek to accomplish is to bring praise, honor, and glory to God our Father and Jesus our Lord. And if you'd like to contact us or suggest a topic for a future program and receive a Christian Questions travel mug, here's what you do. You can write us at Christian Questions, P.O. Box 1837, New London, Connecticut, 06320, or you can check us out at the web on www.christianquestions.net. Today is July 27, 2008, and all printed and audio material are the property of Christian Questions. And finally, if you do have a Christian question or you want to reopen a topic we've already discussed, do let us know. We'd love to hear from you. So on behalf of Vicki... Good morning. How are you? I'm awesome. It's nice to have you back here. Thank you. It's great to be back. Vicki obviously sitting in for Jonathan... And Fred, the man behind the board. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And he's sitting in for Fred, the man behind the board. <laughs> <laughs> we want to welcome you to this hour of our program. So, Vic. Yes, sir. You're back. Where's Jonathan? Jonathan's at a family reunion. A family? Well, a fun place to be. He's reuniting with his family, and we'll allow him to do that this week. It's kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know. And uh, so, last week, Vic, um, actually, I was away... And Jonathan and Fred were here, but what was our subject for last week? We talked about the integrity of the Bible. Right. It was a pretty intensive program. It was. It was interesting because a very different approach. We had uh, Jim Parkinson on with us and Len Grice uh, talking about essentially Bible manuscripts and where the Bible came from and how do we know the Bible is the Bible and uh, very, very, very detailed historical perspective uh, something that we don't normally get into uh, on this program on a regular basis, frankly, because I don't know all that stuff. <laughs> I was going to say, it was, some of it was over my head. Yeah, it was very interesting, though. We want to thank those people who called in and contributed. But this week, we have a totally different subject, Vic, and we, we pulled you in for this subject. Well, not really, but <laughs> it just happened that way. But what's the question? Does God see women as second-class citizens? And the theme text is from Colossians 3.18, Wives, be in subjection to your husbands, as is fitting in the Lord. It's one of those things where you ask the question, you read the scripture, you say, okay, we're done. (laughs) But there is a lot more to that, because this is the age of freedom and equality. It is the age of personal choice, personal preference, and personal comfort. Should anyone get in the way of these things, it's easy to see a discrimination suit on the horizon. Well, in the Bible, these things are very different. Women were taught to be subservient, a teaching that begs the question, was God treating women as second-class citizens? Well, stay with us this morning, folks, as we trace the history of and the reasoning for the seeming unequal treatments found in Scripture, and they certainly are there. And again, the question, does God see women as second-class citizens? Uh, Vic, this is a a detailed question. Uh, There's a lot of Scriptures on it. We're going to really... We spend a little bit of time in the Old Testament, but really focus on the New Testament and try and figure out how it is this relationship between men and women is supposed to work in the eyes of God. Now, as we get started, if you were to take a look today at how does the relationship between men and women work, what would your observation be? My observation of how it should work? No, no, not how it should work. How does it work? It doesn't. (laughs) Okay. Well, there's a there's a there's a quick. Con- <laughs> Did you want to elaborate on that or? Well, I just I think um, many of us are missing it. I think that 
that the relationship between man and woman could be far greater than it is, and because we're both so hung up on, like you were saying, our equality and our freedom in getting our own way, I think it's lacking. Personal choice, personal preference, and personal comfort. Right. Coming your way. <laughs> I loved your opening quote. That was really true. You yeah. can do what you want at your own expense. Yeah, and there is an expense. Well, let, let's go back now. Let's go through some scriptures, and let's let's lay out the groundwork. Let's start at the very beginning, looking at the the introduction, if you will, of of of, of man to the world and then woman to man. So let's go back to Genesis 2, 16 through 25. Let's start there. Okay. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord created... I'm sorry, out of the ground God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed it up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This is at last bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed." So you have a very familiar creation account here, and it's interesting because the way it worked out is God created the man first, and he let them, him deal with the animals and all of that, and he found that there was something different from him versus the animals. There, Go ahead. Right. No, I was just agreeing. Oh, okay. And she's nodding. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> anyway, so, so he... he it, and I, th- and I think God does this to accentuate the relationship between the man and the woman that he is looking to build. 